This video is all about content modeling using Content Hub 1. We will clarify what content modeling means and go through hands-on examples how to create content models and use them afterwards. Content can have different purposes. You might require content about products, recipes, events, blogs, news or something completely different. A content model allows marketers to create content in a structured way. For each content type, there can be several fields defined that describe the content. If we take a look at the recipe example, the recipe can have a name, a list of ingredients, the time to prepare the dish in minutes, a description how to prepare the dish, and an image illustrating the result of the recipe. As mentioned, each content type is defined using different fields and each field can be of a certain field type to support the marketer creating the content in the right way. Content Hub 1 offers a text field that can contain either short or long text, a number field, a rich text field that allows simple text formatting such as bold, italic, underline or even list, links, code or quotes. A boolean, a date time, a reference to other content items that can be really powerful and the media field to reference media items such as images. Fields can be mandatory or optional. So content modeling is the process to define the structure of the content to help organize and manage it. Let's follow up on the recipe example. In order to model content, we need to think what information describes our content, meaning what attributes does our content have. As mentioned earlier, a recipe requires a name, a list of ingredients, the time to prepare the dish, a description and an image. If you think of a recipe, you might require even other fields. Next step is, by knowing what field types Content Hub offers, we can define the types we require and if they are mandatory fields or not. So the name should be of type short text and is mandatory. The list of ingredients will also be a short text containing a comma separated list of ingredients. The time to prepare the dish is a number field. The description can be either long text or rich text. We make it a long text for now. And the image should be of type media to reference images later on. Let's see how this looks for a content author when creating content. In Content Hub 1, we move to the content type section and add a new content type. I call it recipes. As you can see, the ID is automatically set from the name of the content type. The ID needs to be unique within all content types of one content of one tenant. You can manually change the ID only within the creation process. Now let's create the different fields. Recipe name as a text field and we mark it as short text and required. Ingredients, as well as a short text. Recipe description as a text, but in this case as a long text, to be displayed as a multi-line field later on. Minutes to prepare as number field to ensure only numeric values are used. and image field using the type media. Save it. Let's create content using our newly created type. Therefore, we switch into the content section and add content. From the list, we select the type we want to create content of, in our case, recipes. Fill in the fields and select an image that we uploaded before. Let's not forget the names field of our content item. This will be displayed in the list of content items. Save and publish. A recipe is a very focused content type with a limitation in flexibility. 
This is what we wanted to have and what guides the marketer in the best way. But let's take it a bit further. What if we want to manage a website with Content Hub 1? What would be the content model here? A website usually has a header, a main and a footer section. The header contains of a logo and a navigation. The footer contains maybe of copyright text, it can be even more. And the main section depends on the type of page we want to create. A home page might look different than a product page or a blog page or any campaign landing page. So let's define a home page that contains some content but also teases us a list of recipes. When creating a content model, we have to keep in mind that a marketer does not want to involve a developer in order to do minor changes on the website. So in order to cover that requirement, we have to take this content model a bit further. We have the header and the footer, but as we said earlier, the main content type will be dependent on the type of page that the marketer wants to maintain. So we make this our actual page content type, or in this case, the home page content type. This one references now the header and the footer that it requires. The header references the menu content type that represents a list of navigation items. Those contain a label and a link field, both at the short text. This way, the marketer can maintain the navigation from Content Hub 1. Last but not least, the home page references the recipe content type we created earlier. So all content shown on the website is now manageable from Content Hub 1. I've prepared the content types already. My home page content type has the header referenced. If we take a closer look, I specified the content allowed in this field to be of type header. This way, I keep the list of possible content items shorter and ensure that no unwanted content types are used here by accident. Same goes for the footer. Let's have a look on the header. The header content type references a list of items of type menu. The menu offers the fields link and label. For sure I can change the content on the home page. Let's change the title and remove one of the reference recipes. Save and publish. On the website, I can see the changes after refreshing the page. But what if I want to manage the navigation and add another element in there? Due to the content model, I can easily do that. I create a menu item called Content Hub 1, pointing to our Docs page. Save and publish. I navigate to the home page header and add the new menu item here. Again, save and publish. On the website, I can see the new menu item now after refreshing the page. So Content Hub 1 can be an omni-channel content repository for all kinds of content, but you can also manage your web experiences and much more.